So for a week now, I have been testing out the new Microsoft Surface Laptop 7 with the Copilot AI built-in and the Snapdragon X Elite chip. In this video, I'm going to talk about the hardware, the software, my general thoughts on this laptop, but also my general thoughts on Windows laptops. So yeah, let's get into it. All right, so like I said, the first thing I wanna talk about is the design. And there's something about Microsoft laptops that just screams MacBook. The metal design, the slimness, the rectangle shape of it. I know it sounds like a generic laptop, but it does look like a MacBook. Just the feel of it as well. It does feel pretty heavy. I mean, this is the 15 inch Surface laptop. I would say it looks a lot more like a MacBook Air, so it looks like a generic laptop. Some people just want something that's normal, that doesn't want something flashy. This laptop is right up your alley if you're looking for something just generic and regular. One thing about the design that actually kind of bothers me just a little bit is the bezels. I mean, at first when I got it, I didn't really notice the bezels that much. They're not huge or anything. It's just not uniform. So for example, the top bezel just looks bigger than the side bezels and the bottom bezel is huge. I wouldn't mind it if it was at least the same size all around. I would give an exception for the bottom, but for the sides and the top, it just looks different and it kind of bothers me, it kind of brings out my OCD. So yeah, the bezels on the screen is one thing that bothered me with the design. But the actual laptop screen is very, very bright. The colors are amazing and I love watching content with it. So if you plan on watching a lot of videos with this laptop, the screen is amazing, especially if you get the 15 inch, because I do feel like the 15 inch is probably the sweet spot when it comes to actually using the laptop. But considering that the screen is beautiful, so I would suggest getting the 15 inch, but the brightness is amazing, very, very bright, and it still holds a good charge with the brightness. Another thing that bothered me with the design, the sides of the laptop, right on the side of the keyboard. As you can see on the side, it's empty. On MacBooks, this is where you get your speaker. So whenever you're typing, the sound is not coming out from where your hands are. And this just looked like empty wasted space. And I would love to see speakers here or at least on the top above the keyboard. The speakers are underneath the keyboard. And that's another pet peeve of mine. With the Surface laptop, you get your speakers straight from your keyboard. The speakers are okay. They're not amazing. They are pretty loud if you want them to be, but they're not world class. But another thing that annoys me with the fact that the speakers are behind the keyboard or underneath the keyboard is that if you're playing music while you're typing, you do muffle the sound just a little bit while you're typing. So you won't get that best audio sound, especially if you're using your laptop. So I would have loved to see the speakers either on the side or above the keyboard. It's okay. I mean, the sound is decent. It's not world-class. It's not the best. It's just right there in the middle. All right, so one more thing about the hardware is the I.O. I feel like this laptop is maybe competing mostly against with the MacBook Air. So if you're comparing the I.O. of this laptop with the MacBook Air, it does beat it because it does have a proprietary charger. It has, I think, a micro SD slot over here, two USB-Cs, one USB-A, and a headphone jack. I feel like the USB-A should not be here. It's very, very old and is getting obsolete and we should have prioritized another USB-C here. So maybe another USB-C on the right side of the laptop would have been better. I don't like the fact that there's still USB-A's on laptops. I do feel like that should be gone and over with. It's decent. I mean, there's nothing really to complain. It's still more than just basic two USB-C's. So now I want to talk about typing on the keyboard. So yes, the keyboard is pretty decent. I do love the keys. I love how it feels when you type. It feels very soft. It doesn't feel like you get tired of typing when you're typing a lot. So the keys, amazing, A++. All right, so I've talked about the hardware. Now it's time to talk about the software. So with this laptop, it has Windows 11 built in and I gotta say, Windows 11 has been pretty decent. I mean, I haven't had any issues and it feels a lot like Windows 10, so it doesn't feel too different. And I just feel like they did a great job with it. 
it does seem like they're trying to go towards a mobile feeling OS with this Windows 11 because it has a lot of widgets everywhere and also has a lot of ads. So yes, it does feel like they're moving a little bit towards um, a mobile feel. And another reason why I do think that Windows 11 is maybe going towards a mobile feeling OS is because they're really pushing the App Store to download a lot of the apps that you need. The Windows Store back in Windows 10 and Windows 8 wasn't really that much prevalent. They did really try to push it with Windows 8, but yeah, we know how much of a disaster that was. But yeah, let's not think about that right now. So Windows 11 does feel like they're actually having good, decent apps in the App Store. And it actually looks like they're actually having better options with the App Store, especially with the fact that we have the Snapdragon X Elite chip, which is an ARM chip. A lot of the apps that are compatible with this laptop are on the Windows Store. So if you're trying to download apps outside of the Windows Store, you might be out of luck depending on what app you're looking for. So I would say do your research on what apps actually work with your laptop before getting a Snapdragon X Elite laptop. So yeah, Windows 11 does look like it's really trying to push a mobile feel. Um, I was able to connect my phone with the Windows laptop with phone link app and that app is on the Windows Store. Um, I was able to play games on the laptop and the Xbox app is also on the Windows Store. There's Netflix, there's YouTube, there's games, there's movies, there's everything that you really need right there in the Windows Store. So it does look like Microsoft is really pushing towards having an OS where you don't need to download desktop apps on the web or on websites and just going straight to their store and getting apps from there. I did mention gaming earlier and uh, Let's talk about gaming with the Surface Laptop 7. Let's get into it. All right, so I have been a gamer. I'm not really that much of a gamer now. I do have different hobbies and gaming is just in the gutter right now. So I'm not really much of a gamer these days. Since I had a Windows laptop, I was like, why not try gaming with the new Snapdragon X Elite? And I'll have to tell you, don't even try to play games with this laptop. And maybe with any X Elite laptop. I tried to download a lot of games that I had with my Steam library and most of the games did not work. So if you're planning on getting a Snapdragon X Elite laptop and play games with it, make sure that the game that you actually want to play is available to be played on the laptop. Because with the new ARM chip, there's a lot of games that you just can't play. So you have to make sure that the game that you actually want can be played. But even if you find a game that you want that can be played, the power of the chip when it comes to gaming it's just not there i was trying to play i think it was quake or doom one of the two i think it was doom and doom was really not playing very well i couldn't even get 30 fps consistently with this laptop so even if you want to play laptops even if it's here and there on the side it's not the best way to do it and i know what you're thinking microsoft now has x cloud gaming so you can use xCloud with the laptop and play it, right? Yes, but the quality is very dependent on your Wi-Fi speed and strength. And I feel like my Wi-Fi is decent. I don't have the world-class best Wi-Fi, but my experience playing Halo Infinite with the laptop on xCloud was horrendous. Not only did it take time to connect to a server, but when I was able to connect, it was horrible. I couldn't even see what was on the screen. So. Playing games with the Snapdragon X Elite laptop or specifically the Surface Laptop 7 is a no-no for me. And I don't think that you should get it for gaming, even if you're playing games on the side or if you play little games here and there. All right, so I did mention earlier that the Windows 11 has an app called PhoneLink. And that app allows you to get text messages, calls, and notifications from your phone. And it works very well it actually makes the ecosystem problem not a problem. I mean, at first when I was using this laptop, I was missing my MacBook a little bit because I do have the iMessage app and I can do FaceTime calls and I can do all the different things that I want to do with my phone on my MacBook. But with the PhoneLink app, you can do a lot of things that you do with your phone with your Windows laptop. You get the notifications like you usually do. You can control your music if you're playing video or playing whatever podcast on your phone. You can control it with this. You 
you can actually text message people even if it's through iMessage the ecosystem thing is not really much of a big deal I mean there is a lot of other things that can bother you like the copy and pasting from two devices airdrop and all these different things that comes with ecosystem that we, you will not get with the Windows laptop if you have an iPhone but if you just want regular notifications call and texts with your laptop but you don't really need to get a MacBook at that point you can get this because it does the job pretty decently all right so there's one more thing i want to talk about regarding these new generations of laptops this laptop is considered a co-pilot ai laptop it does come with co-pilot built in and with this laptop you can actually chat directly with an ai bot what i want to talk about with the ai is the llms how it actually functions how useful it really is and the things that maybe you really need to help with I've been using Copilot regularly with this laptop and it does do a great job. The LLM is actually pretty decent. It is chat GPT 4.0 in disguise, but still it does a great job at whatever you need it to do. I talk to it and you can actually change the levels of creativity, formality with the AI. So it is good on that part. The LLM is pretty good. But one problem that I have with it is that it's built in on the laptops, but it can't actually see what you're doing on your laptop and you can't change the settings or configure a laptop with the AI. For example, if you tell the AI to change your uh, keyboard settings, it won't be able to do it. Or if you tell the AI to change your uh, screen settings, it can't do it. It can tell you how to do it, but it won't do it for you. And I feel like that misses the point of having AI built in to these computers. I feel like the AI being built in should actually have more manipulations with the computer, especially if they're toting that the AI is actually on device for the most part. I just feel like they missed a the mark with this one. But if you do use the AI Copilot um, widget or Copilot extension with your Microsoft Edge browser, then it can actually see what's on the screen. So I was actually looking on Best Buy for a few tablets and I was confused as to what is the actual competitor. And Copilot was able to tell me exactly what the competitor is just by looking at what I was searching on on the Microsoft Edge browser. So I think that's pretty cool. That's what I would love to see, but on the Windows 11 OS side. I would love to see that Copilot can see what I'm doing on a screen or change some settings on a screen or help me out with some stuff on a screen. It does do an amazing job with troubleshooting because when I was looking to fix something, it actually sent me links to websites, but not only that, it sent me a video clip and it played that video straight from YouTube on the actual Copilot app. So I was very pleased to see that it can help me in that way and I use Copilot a lot for troubleshooting. So the troubleshooting aspect with Copilot is amazing and can eliminate a lot of the tech support that we have to do with our families if they have problem with their tech. It could be a lot better if it had control of the OS and your settings on your laptop, but maybe in another update. All right, so now for my final thoughts on the Microsoft Surface Laptop 7. So I talked about the hardware, talked about the software, and I also talked about the AI. And I actually think that the Surface Laptop is actually the baseline for the new generation of Microsoft laptops. It's not bad uh, that it's very horrible and it's under the line, but it's not amazing where it's over the line. It's actually, I feel like it's the default laptop to go with. If you're not looking for something flashy, if you're looking for something specifically Microsoft and Copilot, you should definitely get this. The design is not too extra, it's very sleek, and it is very, very good with the software and with the hardware, and it just does everything decently. It's not amazing, it's not horrible, it's very decent. So I do feel like this is a great laptop to get, especially if you're a student and you wanna use the AI capabilities for your work or your school, then this laptop is the way to go, in my opinion. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So. Hopefully you guys love the video and you guys can like, leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe.